All right, what's up, everyone? Thank you for tuning in, and welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Remora. We come to you every week and talk all things crypto to keep you guys up to date, informed, entertained, but more importantly, ahead of the markets. That's what we're here to do. My name is Wes, and I am joined with, as always, Siri Crypto. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How we doing? Ah, doing good, man. Doing good. Excited for tonight's show. Uh, it's been a little boring in the past week uh, as far as sentiment market movement, but we do have a few things to go over with you guys. Obviously, we're going to take a look at the Bitcoin price chart. Uh, not much has changed as far as our price points and, uh, and targets that we're looking at, but we'd like to give you guys um, an update and a refresher. And then we're going to be going over a couple of charts that was given to us by Petabyte. And uh, always a pleasure looking at those, man. She has just been absolutely incredible with these charts. You know, she gives them to us in advance a couple of days. And like nine times out of ten, by the time we record, man, she's just been so much on point. I love doing that segment, man. So uh, thank you, Peter Byte. Make sure you guys are following her. She is awesome. Um, we had the SBF case going on. Uh, the jury selection was was pretty methodical, man. So I wanted to get your opinion on that, series <laughs> and uh, see what you thought about that. We had the chain link just uh, rolled out the data streams and uh, their CCIP working with Swift payment systems. I know we want to talk about that and um, a lot of other stuff, man. Why why so much is going to be on chain? On chain is the future. So this is what we want to talk about today, guys. Um, yeah, so that sounds good to you. You guys know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and let's get to it. Siri. So yesterday was, I believe yesterday was day one of this uh, Sam Bankman Freed trial. I'm pretty sure they went over the uh, jury selection or whatever. Um, have you been keeping up with this? I have been keeping up with the drawing <laughs> and it look in the court drawing, it looked like your boy cut his hair off. <laughs> he did, yeah, yeah, did, yeah. Everybody's it, talking about the SBF cut. I didn't, I didn't actually get to see the new do. I'm trying to see the new haircut here. Yeah, I um no more radical chewing on a cucumber with the, you know, hand. I mean, yeah. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. He he got it. I mean, dude, I heard he had the uh the hookup, you know, in prison, man. He got the he got the fade, bro. Oh, he, he got had the fade. to cut Oh, whoops. Yeah, he got the fade, man. Okay, I got you. They had to cut it off cuz you know the lice thing and all that. They got to make sure it's sanitary. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man. And and you know they did it like Bro, like they probably could have left it a little bit longer, you know what I mean? But they probably did it just messing with them, man, trying to make them go into court looking like that, you know. But um, so yeah, so my thoughts on this, real quick, you know, mm -hmm. I saw where his, I saw, you know, Tiffany Fong. I don't know if you follow her on yeah. Twitter. Uh -huh. She was posting something about how his lawyers are now. This is nothing new. His lawyers are blaming caroline his ex-girlfriend of course man. and they're yeah. blaming they're blaming so they're blaming caroline and um the other thing which was just ridiculous is they're blaming cz for calling out the fact that ftx didn't have enough stuff to back their coin basically yeah so cz called him out right but then okay so you're in you're under investigation for crimes of fraud and manipulation mm. and outright theft of your customers it doesn't matter what cz said on a tweet it doesn't right it, that's got nothing to do with so if they if his lawyer tries to go that route that yeah. that is just stupid because nothing um it, it, but this has been the story for the last three years man excuse me it, it's been everything is tether's fault or cz's fault Anything that, you know, is going to be a huge crash. And to be honest, to be fair, I was against Binance, against using Binance because yeah. all the videos I watched from Chico, I was like, yeah, this looks a little too shady for me. And likewise, I did not sign up for FTX. I thought about it. I came this close when all the hype was like, you know, oh, FTX, FTX. I came this close to, um, I said, well, let me buy a FTX token or two. You know, I came this close. I came very close to buying one. And then I yeah. just remembered, I, I looked at the price and I'm, it was around 40, 50 bucks at the time. And I was like, it's overpriced. It's hot. And Chico has been warning me about SBF and FTX and all this stuff for the last two or three years. I know better. Right. But that FOMO, you know how that FOMO can get to you, you know, that greed. And it started get talking to me like, go ahead. Buy. 
and thankfully I listened to my better judgment and said, no, I'm not buying this FTX token. And I missed, I didn't, you know, I didn't buy it, but, um, you know, that just goes to show you though, even when you know, (laughs) even when you know better not to buy something, sometimes that greed can get in you and just, but um, it really can, man. But ultimately it, it crashed and I'm glad I didn't buy it. And I knew about it beforehand he was on my radar for a long time sbf yeah so i i was wise enough but this is why i tell noobs coming in too man pay attention to not just the token um always pay attention to the people involved in the project because Mm -hmm. your people you're buying a token but you're buying the people behind that token yeah and Mm -hmm. that's what you really need to research is the people behind the project which is yeah absolutely that's man. major dude so yeah for sure yeah so, so today was the opening pro um you know i guess they were doing their opening statements today and uh the prosecution was accusing him of, of lying you know and the, uh, his defense was literally said he was a math nerd who didn't drink or party and uh and he basically saying that he just didn't know any better he didn't know what was going on you know the, but here's my thing dude I'm I'm 100% convinced that he's going to go to jail for a long time and I mean dude everybody is admitting guilt SBF's girlfriend you know the co-founder the engineering director they've all admitted to defrauding customers so he has these testimonies that are completely going against him everybody is going against SBF all of his you know partners and his friends and you know everybody that lived together in that you know all the 11 people that lived under that one house are all going against him. So that is going to completely destroy uh, his defense. And, um, and, and dude, he's even admitted, dude, from his mouth, he's even admitted that he thinks that he should go to jail. Now, you know, for how long, who knows? But uh, I am 100% convinced that uh, he's going to go to jail for a long time, man. And um, the jury selection was very methodical man they they turned down a lot of juror uh jury select jury selections to uh finally get the people that you know his defense wanted in there um so it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting man definitely gonna keep an eye on this i think he's facing a long time in prison um and uh yeah man uh, it's definitely something to pay attention to man you know you can't you can't steal all these people's money man and, and defraud people and and get away with it man so oh well, yeah. not not only that but i i made a tweet last week about it because somebody said uh no i i, I commented on rejects um rejects philbin on on twitter yeah. he posted a thing that said everybody and it was this was the smartest tweet i've seen in a long time he said everybody's talking about how this is how he committed uh, crypto crime, you know, and mm-hmm. it gave crypto the bad rap and everything. Right. And he said, this is not a crypto crime. This is a financial fraud crime that just happened to be done with crypto. And I said, oh my God, he was the best one to say it. So I just commented on that and I said, yeah, how about, how about the fact that a lot of people, millions of people in the United States saw that, right? You had Tom Brady mm-hmm. shilling FTX, right? Yeah, God dude. Sakes. A Come lot on, of man. people, man. I mean, that is like, you don't get a more American than a football and Tom Brady talking about something, right? So yeah. you had somebody of that stature talking about crypto, and then a couple weeks later, you know, all this stuff crashes, right? So there's deeper manipulation. I've been I've been screaming that for a while, how they manipulate yeah. things, make them look bad so you don't want to buy them. Now everyone thinks Bitcoin's, you know, the devil because SBF, you know. Right. So. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so yeah, it's but, conspiracy to commit crime. It's financial fraud. It's manipulation. Yeah. And then on top of it, you had bribery. How about all the politicians mm-hmm. he's bribing on both That's sides? That's right, man. That's right. There's a lot of stuff coming out now, man. Um, Crazy. You know, especially with all his uh, partners and, you know, co-workers coming out and, and basically spilling the beans, man. So. A lot of stuff coming out. There was that rumor of him offering what Trump five million or something to to, to not, not run. run again. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of stuff's coming out, man. I think the the biggest thing that really messed him up was before all of this, him going on interviews, going on Twitter mm. Spaces, you know, all these public areas and uh, places he was going and talking about the the charges and everything that happened. That's really messed him up and. uh We'll see, man. We'll see how it goes. But um, he, he definitely deserves some jail time. How much? I'm not really sure, man. Uh, 
yeah. So well, let's, just let's, something to keep an eye on. Just real quick, and we'll move on from the topic. But I, I have to say something about this. The fact that his, um, you know, if you let's say you were to have some mercy on the guy, okay? Because mm-hmm. he's, yeah. he's, he's a young kid. He's not necessarily what you would consider a violent type, <laughs> right? right? So he's definitely a white collar criminal, right? I'm not saying mm-hmm. that he should not get punished because he's right. Comes right. from a wealthy family, but what I'm saying is some. I do have the slightest bit of empathy for the guy. I'm going to tell you why right now. This kid, if you look at his parents, okay, his parents are wrapped up in a lot of stuff, dude. And I'm talking yeah. about stuff that could be shady. I don't know for a fact. I'm just saying from what I've read up on, it looks like his parents were not a hundred percent straight up legit kind of thing. And when you grow up in a house that's all right i'm not going to say that they were criminals but let's just uh-huh. say for, let's say for example his parents were white com- collar criminals yeah if you if you grow up in that and i'm not justifying it right i'm not saying it makes it right i'm right, just right. i'm just saying imagine being a kid you grow up in a white collar criminal family right and then you end up your parents are like co-signing for you cuz keep in mind his parents put up their house for the bail his parents put up uh, his parents were. It wasn't his dad that was on the on the books with FTX. His dad um, had something yeah, tied in. Yes, his dad had something going on. So you, you got yeah. mom and dad, right? And then you got get old oh, Gensler and Caroline are Dude, all college wh- buddies and stuff. Like they went to college together. His parents and uh, Caroline's parents. Yeah, all and, tied like, in. They're all man. connected, dude. What about um? What's his name, dude? Uh, the the Shark Tank. Oh, Kevin. O- Kevin. Yeah, well, I'm not even going to say that man's name. <laughs> I we'll, get- we'll stay away from that one for I'll, now. But- I'll tell you what, I ain't getting on the boat <clears throat> with him. I ain't going on no boating trip. <laughs> oh, good stuff, guys. We're going to keep you updated on that. I th- yeah, uh, today was day two of the of the trial or whatever, and um, we'll just keep a close eye on it. Now, um, yeah, Bitcoin, man. Do you have any uh, any trades open? Anything going on, man? I put a short in today. I'm kind of scared to look at it right now. Um, anything going on, man? You got any trades open or anything? Absolutely not. I, I got chopped <laughs> out that last uh, two weeks ago, and that was the last one I opened for now. I'm just there's not enough gusto to Bitcoin yeah. to get above 33k. Right. And there's not enough fud to bring us down to that 20k CME gap. So mm. I'm just until I I'm waiting for a move. I'm waiting for a move either way. Yeah. And then I will enter a position. But until I see the move that the smartest minds that I know on crypto Twitter, which would be, you know, uh, Giga Chad, you know, Giga Panda Chad uh, from Utopia Market. He's he's a great trader, man. I watch his charts and, and Peter Byte. And when they keep saying, yeah, I'm looking for a downside, I'm looking for a downside. It's like I'm not about to go long, dude. I'm not. I'm. I mean. I mean. I used to watch just the charts. Now I'm watching other analysts a lot more. Not that I stop, but it, it's it's good to see all these other people's opinions, and then when you like form your own opinion afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm on your side more so. I would definitely look to the short side, short term right now, than long term. I would be I would be scared to go crazy long right now. I just feel like you would get yeah. wiped out. Yeah, I'm uh right now i mean like you said man it, it's gonna take a little bit to uh push us up there we like right now we really don't know um but what is your target like what number do we have to get above and like the bull runs on man because because mine i'm looking at the uh and i heard you mention this earlier i can't remember if it was just on the show or when we were on the phone but thirty three thousand, man the, what that was the initial is, terra yeah dude if terra luna we- wasn't that the terra luna like that's where we dropped down to, right? With the Terra Luna um, Terra crash. Luna, Terra Luna crash, I believe, was in August of 2023. Am I right? Yeah. Or, no, it, was it? What? No, 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 no. no. That was no. Uh, like. That was in oh, 2022 Jesus, or 2021. I'm like, oh man, I'm scared. Honestly, it, I, have I would have at, to look at the chart, man. Yeah, I got to look at the max chart to see the yeah. Terra Luna drop. Where we? Terra at? Luna Let's chart see. was in 2022 in. Uh-huh uh may of t- june may 2022 and there we it is fell yep. from like thirty thousand down to freaking twenty thousand. yep um so <clears throat> but that initial drop is what isn't that like 30 yeah 31 okay 31 yeah 
so what is the number for you, man? Like, what is the number we got? We have to get above and retest as support to when you're like, all right, dude, bulls on, full on, let's go. Bulls on when we get back above comfortably and bounce off of it and retest between 33,000. That's my lowest level. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not happy until we break that number. Right. 33 to, to say the GBTC level, which has not changed. 37,800. That's it. Between 33 and 38,000. Once we, I would say once we break out of that range, I'm going to give you a range. 33 mm. to 37. Let's just say 33 to 40 to make it easy. Okay. Yeah. Until we get out of 33 to 40, um, the bull market, the real bull market is, is not started yet. But, yeah. but I will say I'm not going to be waiting until we get past 40K to buy Bitcoin or to buy alts because that's just stupid. I mean, this is still DCA right. time. Prime, prime time for DCA. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's my, my bull run is on is when we, sh with strength, go past 33K. Mm. <clears throat> Even if we hit our head at 40, it doesn't matter because I feel like once we once we finally get through that 33K, I think we're straight, dude. I don't think we're yeah. going to have to worry about falling below it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one, man. Uh, I still stick to the to what I was saying a couple weeks ago, guys. Just look for that 20,000. There's that CME gap. Maybe we'll come down to close it. I think we had to fall through 23 first as that point of control. Um, a lot of volume right there at 20. Or yeah, am I saying the right number here? Yeah, 23,000. So I think 23,000 is going to be a, a nice level of support. So if we fall through 23, look for that 20K. And um, what are you doing, man? If we go to 20K, bro, are you are you selling? I'm you selling doing? my. I'm selling, I'm selling my it car, all, bro. dude. No, I'm selling no, my car. Oh, oh no, I'm I'm do like. I'm out, bro. I, yeah, I'm, I'm out of crypto, man. Oh, we go to out? 20K, I'm I'm out. No, I'm selling no my more. car and buying Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm selling my kid, man. Like, <laughs> no, seriously, guys, uh, don't don't do that. <clears throat> oh, um, Peter Bytes chart with the DXY. This is a good segue into this. Let's do this, it, by man. The way. Let's do it. Yeah. So the <clears throat> so the chart the chart that she sent. She said, "Hey guys, DXY did." What we did not want it to do, it got above that line and it used it as support. Mm -hmm. um, if the DXY holds this line, it will rally much higher as in the following chart. Um, 0 0.20 is the ultimate max target where, the, where there will be steps along the way up. Now, the price target for the DXY is about 118. That's mm -hmm. where I like to say the squiggly line TA she put. Yeah. Now... I see that, that, but if that happens, bro, okay, if we rally, if the dollar rallies that hard, yeah, that would be perfect with the inverse correlation with Bitcoin falling down to the CME mm. gap of possibly going to that 20K level. I'm just saying that, like, yeah, it would, man. It would this, play out exactly how we're looking at it. Yeah. So I'm now is so, and I, we spoke about this on the phone a little bit because, okay, Peter Byte's got a great chart. She's yeah. been dead on the left. She's actually probably 10 for 10 now. Dude, I mean, she is on it, yeah. She has not called a wrong call yet, so I'm like, knock on wood, I don't want to break that, but I'm just saying. Okay, so she's calling for the DXY to, to have this, this rally with a few yep. stops along the way, which makes sense. Now, we've already broken out of that trading channel where she had her down targets and her yep. up targets. And we flipped it into support, and bro. And flipped it into support. So, is she right about it rallying up there? She may be. If she is... Okay, Bitcoin has still got that potential to go fall when the dollar rises for Bitcoin to crash because that's just what mm. that's just the way it rolls right now. So if that were to happen, plus you got Bitcoin ETF coming out, right? But think about it. BlackRock, Fidelity, all these major companies that are selling ETF to their clients, Bitcoin ETFs, they're going to announce it first. Hey, this is what's coming. They already yeah. went to their wealthy uh, clients a year ago and offered them. Um, so they're they're. I think it's what accredited investors. You have to have over a million, yeah, mil million dollars of of worth of assets in your account. Uh -huh. and then you're an accredited investor, and then they'll you know. So they already went to their wealthy homeboys and said, hey, "Dude, they're locking this. it in, man." But for their lesser clients, you know, just for maybe people who just have financial advisors there, they would yep. announce on the news, "Hey, Bitcoin ETFs coming." <clears throat> And then, mm -hmm. see, wealthy people are smart. They don't. They know how the money game works, right? 
So they're not going to buy the Bitcoin when everyone else is like, oh, it's so great. Of course so, not, bro. They're not. They're yeah, going to wait yeah. for that crash, right? So you got three. And they'll induce the crash just they'll to induce buy it. They'll induce it just to, they exactly. will induce it, yeah. So, so my, my target is you got um, Petabyte, you got the Bitcoin ETF, and then you mm -hmm. got that CME gap down at 20K. So yep. I've got one, two, three reasons plus our boy from... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Our boy from Utopia calling the same thing. Yeah. Our boys, our boys over at Utopia have been saying this for yeah. a minute. A lot of people are, are saying But listen, man, I haven't heard too many people talk about it. I'm telling you, man, guys, the smaller accounts is where the alpha is. Um, when, when you're listening to you know some of these uh, people on YouTube or Twitter that have a million plus followers – that's that's sometimes that's not really the alpha that's like the mainstream this is what they're thinking and sometimes you want to go against that so when it's the smaller accounts you know it, it's good to follow these smaller accounts because they got the alpha man i just wanted to throw that in there because i mean <clears throat> you got to pay attention man like you, you got to know who to follow who to listen to some people just want the clicks some people just want the follows and there's some people that genuinely want you to to make money man and to do good and, and to learn that's the smaller accounts yeah and to learn what you're doing too so you're, right. you're not just um <clears throat> you're not just following other people like you're not just a follower you know yeah. this this is still a player versus player game and you you have to be careful you're still making your own right. choices for yourself <clears throat> so that's right man. that's yeah, right good good call on that we're looking at that so our bullish side our, our bear side is 20k at the lowest that with the cme gap and with some fud um, but to sum it all up, above thirty three k, yeah, thir thirty three to forty, we're on, we're off to the yeah. races. Yeah, that's it, man. That's right. All right, what's going on with Chainlink, dude? Like Chainlink's been, um, dude, they've Chainlink's been like that outlier. You know what I mean? And I know we've talked about this before on the show. Chainlink is that top five project in my, in my opinion. And um, you know, for those of you that don't know what Chainlink is, it's an oracle. And it, uh, they, they just rolled out this data streams. It's a pool based Oracle thing. And it makes, basically it makes sure high frequency market data is always there off the blockchain. So it's there when you need it. And, um, it takes this off the blockchain data and it pairs it up with trading that's going on on DeFi platforms to make these transactions happen automatically. They're now rolling out. They got the CCIP and they're working with, um, who who are they with? Um, Swift. Swift. Sorry, I couldn't couldn't think of it. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about that, Sierra. What are, what is going on with the CCIP Chainlink and, and Swift? So uh, Swift, if you guys aren't familiar, and I'm not I'm not a expert on this by any means, but I do know that the the big boys of the world, <clears throat> Swift is the payment rail <clears throat> that they use. So the the people that run the banking the bank of international settlements you know the fed wire all these all these ways that they move money around the world right now mm. is swift is that global um they're the dominant global financial money movers like they are the top dog as far as that goes now they approached sergey over at Chainlink a couple months ago this has been going on for a while but yeah Mm -hmm. They approach them. So Swift is basically blockbuster video and Sergey is uh, YouTube. Okay. So, and streaming. So yeah. blockbuster, but Swift is probably not going to go the route of blockbuster, meaning Swift will probably metamorphosize into the blockchain, which is going to happen. Um, so Swift approached Sergey from Chainlink and said, Hey, all right, we get it. This blockchain thing, we get it. Help us, <laughs> right? So, so <laughs> Sergey is over there working with them, but it's, Chainlink's already in place. Like, crypto price feeds cannot exist without Chainlink. If you guys right. are familiar with what Chainlink does, Chainlink yep. is is basically the price indicator for everything on chain. So it brings you the information in real time of assets. Now. Yep that's crucial for trading it's crucial for brokers it's it's crucial for investors it's crucial for everybody you have to mm -hmm. know what the price is when you're going to buy or sell and you have to know that the price is trustworthy that you're getting so chainlink 
is the protocol that does that. Now, mm -hmm. they t t chain link is usually the first coin to pump at the beginning of a bull run. So that's another indicator to look for is it, historically speaking, chain link is the first coin to really take off and run before a bull market. So if we see yeah. the 20 CME gap get filled at 20K, but then you start seeing that bounce and you start seeing chain link take off, like let's say chain link goes from like, where is it at? Seven bucks, six, seven bucks, eight bucks right now? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like it's that. been bouncing between five and eight dollars for a while. But let's see you see chain link crack nine, ten dollars, twelve dollars, and all the other altcoins are kind of sitting still. That's your signal that the bull run's getting ready to start because that happens that happened the last two bull runs. I don't want to say it happens every time, but the last yeah. two bull runs, if you look, um, chain link tends to lead the other alts. So massive. For, yep. for Swift to be coming to Chainlink and saying, hey, can you help yep. us? So you got that. And then you got Larry Fink openly mm -hmm. saying that the tokenization of all digital assets will be on chain. Yeah. I mean, those are the two biggest money people in the world, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it, it, so. it's going to happen, dude. It's inevitable, man. And um, I mean, before we kind of move on to the adoption and all the stuff, you know, coming on chain, like, the the data streams that they just rolled out i mean it, it basically gives quicker access to the market info and this basically it's going to mean less slippage uh less slippage lower fees faster settlements um and it helps to fight against you know different uh, market manipulation so this is a tool that these big money guys that are going to be very active um you know in crypto and in the markets they're, they're gonna want to use this stuff man any like they're they're working with a lot of money so any money that uh is lost is a lot of money to them you know what i mean so um yeah and right now dude it's only available on guess where arbitrum gmx so yeah this is really cool man and uh you know we talked about last week the adoption aspect and obviously like we are moving to an on-chain um, environment like everything is going to be on chain it just makes sense you know what i mean we're moving in that direction and it's really cool to see what are um how do you feel about how do you feel about the you know equities and stuff like that coming on on chain i mean obviously it's inevitable but what what are the advantages of that man oh the advantages are too too numerous to get into but <laughs> right just just for one <clears throat> you know, the SEC is a dinosaur, and th that institution itself was created back when securities were, you know, after the after the Great Depression, the crash is when they created the SEC to protect investors, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. you're talking about stocks themselves, a certificate of ownership of a piece of a company. Stocks themselves were invented, and they were pieces of paper back in the day, right? Right. So you had a, a certificate, right? So it's like... Here we are, we all walk around with cell phones. So I don't know what happens. Are we going to go back to pay, pen and paper? I don't think Absolutely so. Absolutely not. So, yeah. so we're not going backwards. So the only way we can go is forward. So basically, if you're going to tokenize the blockchain assets, or I'm sorry, stock market assets, you already kind of have that with ETFs, exchange mm -hmm. traded fund, uh, you know. ETFs are sort of like that, but blockchain is different because it's verifiable. It's a public ledger. No one can mess with it. You know? Right, right, so, right. So the safety element, you see what's happening. Gensler got denied for... Yeah, I saw the, that with the, the XRP thing. Yeah. The XRP, he got denied for his appeal. Now he's mm -hmm. getting denied for blocking the Bitcoin spot ETF. Yeah, they're going to come at him, dude. They're going to block that they're because... There's no logical reason for him not to allow it. Why would you allow futures and not a spot? It like makes zero sense. And he knows that, dude. He well, absolutely the, knows that. The futures, I'm going to tell you why they did the futures. He's because pushing it, man. They can bet on the price with futures, and that actually t tends to have a psychological effect on the actual real price because these guys are around the money all day yeah. long. Wall Street guys, CME. They're around the money all day long, so they know sh stuff before we so, do. So, why, why do why do? I think the biggest question with the ETFs being a lot of chatter. You know, everybody's talking about the ETFs, the ETFs, and for for those of you that don't understand the ETFs, why is Sierra? If you could explain it, why is a spot ETF 
better than the uh, futures ETF? What makes the spot so much different and how would it impact price like from a spot? What makes it, what's the difference in it? Okay, so I've studied this when I was first studying stocks and stuff. Mm. I studied this a lot because it made no sense to me. And right. in, a, in an aspect, to be honest with all of you, it still doesn't make 100% sense to me. I still do not understand how they get to manipulate the price with futures. All I know is when you're when you're betting on um, futures, everything mm -hmm. is settled at the end of the day in cash. So right. it's basically like me and Wes say, hey, man, I bet you Bitcoin's going to $100,000 yeah. tonight. It's not um, backed up by the actual asset. Yeah, it does not. It's not has nothing to do with Bitcoin. We don't we're not betting on. I get to keep, it's not like options where you get to hold the stock and then you sell right. it and then you have to you own the stock. Mm -hmm. You're basically making a paper bet with just money. You're saying, yeah. I bet you a thousand bucks the price will be here. I bet you a thousand bucks it'll be here. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with owning the underlying asset. Right. So if Gensler was smart, he would have said, I don't trust custody of blah, 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 that he would have went more that route, but he dropped right. the ball exactly. and instead yeah, just kind of exactly. like an idiot just fought it the wrong way. <laughs> and now he's losing and I don't care because he's got yeah. it coming. But the futures are a way... This is just my opinion. Futures are a way for the for the wealthy, rich guys that are down in the, in the pit, which you don't have guys in the pit anymore. I'm old school. You know, mm -hmm. back in back in the day, you'd see the traders down on the floor, Wall Street, yeah. waving, right. screaming. Right? It's a way for them to bet on the price of an asset, and I'm talking about futures in general. Yeah, it's a way for them to bet on the price of an a, of of an asset, and then that creates hype, which hype creates hype, and then that causes FOMO. So FOMO is not new to crypto, you guys. It's been going on for 250 years in the stock market. FOMO and greed. Yeah. So the futures thing is a way for the insiders to dominate and direct and kind of nudge yeah. the price of an asset to where they want and it. And sentiment, to go. too. Yeah. And, and sentiment. sentiment. So, so that's just a, yeah. a brief explanation, and it's yeah. not the real definition yeah. of what it is I mean, by any dude, means. When you have that much money, these old school big money guys, big money wells, they're not going to Coinbase, making an account and, and you know, buying Bitcoin straight off of Coinbase. No, exactly. they, go, they call their asset manager, BlackRock, Fidelity, whatever, and they say, hey, uh, you know, uh, you see Bitcoin's um, been kind of a hot asset lately. Go ahead and allocate 1% of my funds towards Bitcoin because it's a spot. Now, that right there is what's going to move the price, man. That's going to move when, the when, price. When they come yes. in and they say, hey, I've been hearing a lot about this Bitcoin thing. Uh, go ahead and put like, you know, 0.5%, which is a lot of money to, to these whales. Go ahead and put, you know, 1% to, uh, towards Bitcoin. And um, it's, it's different because it's backed up by the actual asset instead of future. So yeah, one for those for, of you that were yeah, confused about one. that, yep, yeah, that's, what, that's what that is. Um, and that's why it's good good for us. Yes, thank you for clarifying that because I, I forgot that. It, that's what he just said is basically they have to have it. You can't they sell it, yeah. the Bitcoin without it being backed one for one yeah. with the And ETF. they don't trust themselves to cut. Like if they don't trust themselves to do their own, you know, equities and stock and all that stuff to hold their own stuff like that, they're dang, damn sure not going to trust themselves to hold Bitcoin in their own wallet and they're not right. going to Coinbase to buy it. So that they leave it up to their asset managers to do it. Um, we didn't really, we're already at 33 minutes, so we don't really have time it. to get into, um, uh, the, the other aspects of why we say everything's coming on chain, but just bet yeah. and just know if it's coming, Larry Fink of BlackRock is saying it. And if Swift, which is the biggest financial payment system in the world is coming to chain link and asking them for advice, this is your signal right now to know that traditional finance is about to adopt crypto technology or yeah. they're going to get steamrolled and be, they're going to be no more. They're going to go the way yeah. of the blockbuster. So it's, it's yeah. bullish overall guys. The sentiment of this video is still bullish overall. Yeah. Don't, 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 uh, yeah. Don't get fooled by, by what they say and the, uh, general, you know, direction of, um, you know, how the media pushes price and stuff, man. Like all this is, uh, intended for that you know absolutely <clears throat> um yeah all right so let's start to wrap it up siri next week man next thursday dude it's the big day man we've been what's waiting. going on man 
<laughs> this is this has been a dream of ours since episode yeah, one. Very to be excited. honest with you, but ever since episode one, when we were eyeing Arbitrum and we were really hungry, and um, we didn't have, ever really think this was going to happen. But now no, that really. now that it is happening, it's awesome. So yeah, we, we're going to have Ryan Reynolds on the show next week. <laughs> uh, no, I can't joke around. We got to be serious. We're going to have yeah. Andrew. Saunders. We got the chief on, man. The chief, chief, the colonel, is coming on. He's going to bless colonel. us with his presence on the Crypto Remora. He's going to be live. Uh, we're going to talk about the hash first. We're going to talk about so hash excited. flow. We're going to yeah. talk about XP. We're going to talk about weapons of disaster that are going Dude. on. We're going to talk about friends that are being yeah. split. You guys, there is friendships Dude. being broken right now. There, there, is, is... <laughs> there is a fight happening. You guys just don't even know. There if you're not is... in the hash first yet... It's getting real, dude. Bro, it's like, getting it's real getting up real. in here, bro. People it's are getting, getting real. <laughs> I mean, friends are, are quitting each other. Lovers are breaking up. I mean, it's getting nuts. It's, it's, it's getting serious, man. If you, you don't, don't know who Hashflow is, if you don't know what Hashflow is, and you don't know about the Hashverse, you will very soon. We have uh, the chief, the colonel, Andrew Saunders, coming on next week. It's going to be uh, awesome. And it's going to be fun, man. We've been looking forward to this for a long time, and uh, I didn't think we'd get it this soon, but, but we did. And it's going to be a blast. So look forward to that, guys. Um, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up, Siri? No, that's it, man. You guys just look out, look out for our... We're going to post a couple small videos during the week just to keep you updated. If anything crazy happens, we're going to put out some smaller stuff during the week. So look for yeah. that. Cool deal, man. That's going to wrap it up for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for being here and supporting this channel, man. We appreciate all of you. Uh, make sure you are following us on all socials at the Crypto Remora. Follow Sierra at Sierra Crypto, myself at Crypto MacGyver. Make sure you give uh, Peter Byte some love, man. Show her some love. She is incredible. Thank you, Peter Byte, for uh, sending those charts to us. And um, yeah, as always, guys, much love to you and much love to the Arbonauts. Till next time, peace out.